I had been wanting to develop a course that would introduce students to the core ideas of complex systems. Networks, diversity, learning, large events, path dependence, tipping points, that would be relevant to their daily lives and future careers. By teaching modeling, I could make students better thinkers while introducing them to complexity. I could teach them tools that would improve their abilities to reason, explain, predict, design, communicate, act, and explore. The course's motivating idea would be that we must confront the complexity of the modern world with multiple models. At semester's end, rather than see the world from a particular angle, students would see the world through many lenses. They would be standing in houses with many windows, able to look in multiple directions. My students would be better prepared for the complex challenges before them. Improving education, reducing poverty, creating sustainable growth, finding meaningful work in an age of artificial intelligence, managing resources, and designing robust financial, economic, and political systems. The next fall, I resurrected the course. I contemplated rebranding it as 32 models that will turn you into a genius. But the culture at Michigan frowns on hyperbole. So I stuck with Michael's title, An Introduction to Modeling. Lave and March's book proved to be a brilliant introduction. However, modeling had made huge advances in the intervening decades. I needed an updated version that included models of long-tailed distributions, networks, rugged landscapes, and random walks. I needed a book that discussed complexity. So, I began to write. For two years, the ground proved rocky. My plow moved at a slow pace. One spring day, I again ran into Michael, this time in the archway underneath West Hall. I had been questioning the course, which was now drawing 20 students. Were models too abstract for undergraduates? Should I teach a different course on a specific issue or policy domain? Michael offered up a smile, noting that any endeavor worth pursuing merited questioning. As we parted, Michael commented on the importance and value of helping people think clearly. He told me not to give up, that he took joy in my challenges. In the fall of 2012, the ground under the course shifted. Vice Provost Martha Pollock asked me to teach an online version, what is now called a MOOC. With a tablet computer, a $29 camera, and a $90 microphone, model thinking was born. With assistance from too many people at Michigan, Coursera, and Stanford University to thank properly, a quick shout-out to Tom Hickey, who did yeoman's work, I reorganized my lectures into a form suitable for an online course, dividing each subject into modules and removing all copyrighted material. With my dog Bounder as an audience, I taped and retaped lectures. The first offering of model thinking drew 60,000 students. That number now approaches a million. The popularity of the online course led me to abandon the book. I thought the project unnecessary. But over the next two years, my email inbox began to fill with requests for a book to complement the online lectures. Then Michael Cohen lost his battle with cancer, and I felt that I needed to finish the book. I reopened the manuscript folder. Writing a book requires large blocks of time and spaces that allow for clear thought. The poet Wallace Stevens wrote, Perhaps the truth depends on a walk around the lake. I relied on a close analog. Mind clearing swims across Winans Lake, where my family spends our summers. Throughout the writing process, the continuous life I share with the love of my life, Jenna Bednar, our sons, Ori and Cooper, and our enormous dogs, Bounder, Oda, and Hildy, has brought laughter, comfort, and opportunities. Among them, Ori having one week to correct the penultimate draft's mathematical errors, and Jenna, having two weeks to identify instances of unclear writing, logical flaws, and muddled thinking. As has been true of most of my written work, this manuscript might be best described as an original draft by Scott Page, with substantial revision by Jenna Bednar. During the seven-year period of writing this book, my children have transitioned from preteens to young adults. Ori is now off to college. Cooper follows next year. 
in the interval between sketching the initial outline.